this wasn't uh, a traditional peacekeeping operation. If you're going to do peacekeeping, peace has to be in place. There was nothing left. It was just everything was burned or, or burning. It's, it's still. It's not a place I want to go back to. It's different to process because you're trained for combat, trained for war, worst case scenario, but really we're there to help the people. And then, uh, yeah, the, the tables turned that, that day. I think it's one of the few times that UN forces, and particularly the Canadian forces, stood up to this level of violence directed against the civilian population. And the Canadians were the ones that were the highest profile that went in and engaged the Croatians to get them to stop, but not until the Croatians had conducted their massacre. Going back, I'm no expert. It could help. It'll certainly be interesting. No doubt about that. Bosnia is really where Canadian peace operations uh, began in the, in the Balkans. So riding from Sarajevo to the Matic Pocket uh, makes sense to honor the service of everybody who served there, fought there, and, and the 23 who, uh, who never came home. This will be very unique because we're going to have riders with us that are, uh, that are veterans of the conflict in the areas that we're going to be riding through. It's going to be so special to have them tell their own stories. Uh, be emotional because many of them, uh, it'll be their first time back. We spend the next seven days on the road and we'll ride about 600 kilometers with 7,000 meters of climbing because uh, you're, you have two fabulously beautiful and very hilly countries. So uh, it's going to be a test for riders physically. I think for many of us, it's also going to be a test emotionally. As a young 21 year old, um, you know, light machine gunner in an infantry section, and I didn't know what the hell was going on uh, back then. Like, you knew what you knew. So I didn't know the politics behind it, and, and uh, we didn't need to know at the time, probably. But as I got older, I needed to know. I'm, I'm good with being here. It's, it's, um, it's enlightening, it really is. Uh, and you can have a new appreciation for it when not everybody's trying to kill each other. And uh, it's uh, revitalized. People are going about their business. They seem to be getting along. I mean, there are some always some underlying uh, tension between the two sides, but how could you not when you do? commit those kind of atrocities with each other, but uh, it really is a beautiful country. That's what I remember from this tour, was the children. They loved us, always, you know, and I think the, the children are the ones that you never forget. It's really fitting that we br brought the Izzy dolls. My friend, Marcus Field, who uh, was killed by a mine in 1994, his mother used to send over these dolls, and his nickname was Izzy and they're called Izzy dolls. So his mother would send them over to him and he would pass these out to the children in Bosnia. And when he died, the troop, the, the engineering troop, asked his mother to continue to send them so we can continue on the legacy to, to give them to the children in Bosnia. When his mother passed away, she handed over the tradition to a company in Canada and the company decided to use them as packing material in uh, relief packages to send over to different countries during disasters. And now when the medical supplies are opened, they have all these dolls to give to the children in disaster areas to bring a little bit of joy into their lives. And I think there's been over 100,000 dolls in over 30 countries. I had a Facebook Messenger request from some name that I didn't recognize here in country. And when I opened it, it was from the mom of the two girls that we gave the Izzy dolls to. Oh, wow. And she sent me a picture of the two dolls and the girls with the Izzy dolls. And she said, you know, after you guys roll through, 
I went, and I don't know if Mike mentioned why we were there or not, but she went to the website, she found out about the Izzy Dolls and the significance of the Izzy Dolls. She went to Wounded Warriors website and saw what we do and watched the videos with her kids. So these Izzy Dolls in the, are in the hands of two children who understand the significance of them. This whole ride has been very, very difficult. I think way more difficult than most people ever predicted or, or thought, thought of because of the, the hills and then the heat. And then it got totally cold and windy. And yesterday was such a long day. And it was so ideal to end up at Madak at the end of that. So I want you guys to not just ride together, but be together. Um, be there for each other. This is gonna be a difficult day for a lot of people, okay? Um, and, and today is the day where we come together um, for each other, and this is, this is why we're here. Offer your support and your services to others. Um, today of all days. It wasn't pretty. The next day we were finding bodies and he was doing a sweep of picking, getting bodies. And we, we all go by it in the Medak there, there's a little church there. We use that as a morgue, an improvised morgue at that point. I remember the second day, and I was about from here away from an 18 year old maybe. And I'm looking at him, I asked him a question. And it's what I always refer to, the thousand mile stare. He wasn't there. They had enough at that time. Uh, Wade Smith. He was 21 at that time, and I got four kids of my own, and uh, I would not ever want them to see what these guys saw. Sometimes I can get through this shit, sometimes I can't. As we were stuck there, the smell, the sounds, we wanted access. We couldn't get through the tanks. There was just a, a colossal moment, smell, smoke. You could hear explosions as they detonated each building. They were booby trapping some of the homes, which very much remain that way today in the villages nearby. Nobody's ever gone back. Everything was dead. Cats, dogs, livestock, animals. Every single thing died in there. So Medak for us carries that weight and for all of the Croatians also, it does. It's a dark moment for them. So take your time when we go through there, experience it. The place feels heavy to me, but if we don't have exposure or we can't frame it in the right way, uh, it doesn't. The villages are empty. Nobody ever came back. What happened there will probably stay a museum piece forever. If you're a 19 year old rifleman, how do you explain this back home? especially in 1993-94. How do you do that? The fact that some of these guys, or many of them, have suffered in silence because they don't know how to explain it, I mean, I find that deeply tragic. We were so forgotten, and it was so hard for the first eight, nine, 10 years when people would just say, what, you were where? Because to us, like, we were in the shit, right? We were, we were ready for anything, and it was scary. It was really scary, like, the night before we went into Medak, I don't know what time it was, probably three in the morning or something, the CO came around and, and he said, hey, I don't think we're all gonna make it out of this one. And we're like, oh. So we just smoked cigarettes and waited. I guess all I wanna say is that I'm so incredibly grateful for all of you to be here and recognize that Canada was here and all the troops, because there were a lot and I wish they were more here right now, and I, I, I hope they had that chance to, 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 to do what I'm doing right now, because I came here for, for love, for compassion and forgiveness, and I'm getting it. I really am. It's so important to look at the Croatians here and go, yes, I can love those people and not, not hate them, because I did. I did. Yeah.
and it and it tainted me for a long time. So, so thank you, everybody. There shouldn't be a veteran that's homeless. There shouldn't be a veteran that can't reach out and get help. Um, there shouldn't be a veteran that's alone. And there shouldn't be a veteran that um, commits suicide without anybody ever having an idea of it, of it. They just need to be understood, heard, gotten, respected.